I hope I can talk my parents into buying me an Atari 800 XL. Well, tell them all the things he can do for you. Right. I'll tell them it's got 256 colors and four sound channels. I don't know. That's a little technical. Why don't you tell them it'll help you learn music and art? Well, and there's integrated software for word processing, spreadsheets, forecasting. No, tell them it'll help you write term papers. I'll tell them it's expandable with serial link peripherals like modems and disk drives. Tell them it's your birthday. Well, it's not my birthday, and I don't think I'll be doing any schoolwork on this, but I got one anyway, so let's take a look. In late 1983, Atari released the 600 XL. As one of their later XL series home computers, it acted as the replacement for the Atari 400 and was effectively a lower-end Atari 800 XL, which replaced both the 800 and the 1200 XL. This lower-end machine is relatively similar to the 800 XL, but it lacks a DIN connector for composite video and has only 16K of RAM compared to the higher-end model 64K. I got my Atari in the original box, and if it has ever been opened, I can't tell. It's a mint condition machine, and considering how yellowed and non-functional this 1010 tape drive is after about the same amount of time, that's impressive. Physically, the computer is among the smallest Atari ever made. Here it is next to a ThinkPad X220, 13-inch MacBook Pro Retina, and modern desktop keyboard. I was able to use the joysticks from my Atari Flashback 2, and a pair of original Atari paddles my dad dug out of a drawer. Why a 600XL? Well, the 600XL was my dad's first ever computer, so though this isn't his specific computer, it seemed like the best model to get. Being basically new, the computer worked fine. It worked, but it didn't work for very long. After I'd had it out of the box for just a few hours, it began to show thick grey lines on the screen and didn't seem to properly power on. After some research online and some tests inside the Atari, it turned out that it was the power supply's fault. I cut the end off the Atari supply and soldered onto it a more modern supply of the same voltage and adequate current, and the Atari powered on again. Though it did power on, the video looked fuzzy and the colors were incorrect. This was due to potentiometers I had adjusted when diagnosing the previous issue. I opened the Atari again to fix them, but accidentally turned a screw on the RF modulator too much. Rather than fix the potentiometer, I decided to use Craig Lazowski's guide to modify composite video onto my Atari. <laughs> Rather than pay the often ridiculous eBay prices for games, I opted for an Atari Max flash cartridge and USB programmer. The two devices linked together, you create your menu using the included Windows software, and then flash it to the cartridge. Once you put the cartridge in the Atari, you can pick a game and it loads as if you had a real cartridge. This is where I ran into the final problem. Most games expect the 64K of RAM available in higher-end Ataris. Though I have bought a kit to upgrade the RAM to 256K, I have yet to install it, so I'm limited to Frogger, Centipede, Space Invaders, and Breakout. At least those are the ones I could find that work. By far my favorite of these is Breakout. In fact, I liked it so much that I actually hooked up the 600XL to the in-car DVD player during a long drive so I could play it. So after getting the power supply working, adding a newer video output, and buying a flash cartridge, this is a really interesting retro computer. And with the 130XE compatible 256K RAM upgrade, it should be basically as good as a 600XL gets. So, that's how I got the Atari working again, how I upgraded the video output, and what I thought of it in the end. If you like this video, then Dodoid is still a very, very small channel, so please subscribe if you'd like to see us grow, and until next time, bye.